My dad's habit of driving us through Peel Hill was a bit of an aspirational exercise. It was his chance to show us what a good education could lead to. My parents had spent spent almost their entire lives living within a couple of square miles in Chicago, but they did not expect that Craig and I would do the same. Before they were married, both of them had brief, briefly attended community colleges, but each had abandoned school long before getting a degree. My mom had been studying to become a teacher, but realized she'd rather work as a secretary. My dad had simply run out of money to pay tuition, joining to joining the armies instead. He he'd had no one in his family to talk him into. Returning to school, no ma no medal of no medal of what that sort of life looked looked like. Instead, instead he served two years, moving between different military bases. If if finishing college college and becoming an artist had been dream a dream for my dad, he quickly redirected his hopes using his wages to help pay for his younger brother's degree in architecture instead. In his late thirties in his late thirties, my dad was focused on saving for our, us kids. Our family was never going to be house poor because we weren't going to own a home house. My dad operated from a practical place, sensing that resources were limited and maybe so too was time. When he wasn't driving a hay now, he used a cane to get around. Before I finished elementary school, that cane would become a crutch and soon after two, that two crutches, Whatever, whatever disease was inside my head, dad, it was withering his muscles and striping his nerves. My dad viewed it, it as his own private challenge as something to silently with, withstand. <laughs> As family, we allowed ourselves humble luxuries. When Craig and I got our report cards at school, our parents celebrated by ordering in a piece pizza from Italian Fiesta, our favorite place. During hot weather, we buy hand packed ice cream, a pint each of chocolate butter pecan butter pecan and black cherry and make it last for days every year for the for the year and water show we packed a picnic and drove north along lake michigan to the fence of peninsula where my dad's water filtration plant was located it was one of the few times a year when employee families were allowed through the gates and in onto a grassy lawn overlooking the lake, where the view of fighter jets swooping in formation over the water revealed that of any penthouse penthouse on Lake Shore Drive. Each July, my dad would take a week off from his job tending boilers at the plant, and we'd pile into the buck with an aunt and a couple of cousins, seven of us in that 
two-door car for hours, taking the Skyway out of Chicago, skirting the south end of Lake Michigan, and driving until we land in White Cloud, Michigan, at a place called Duke's Happy Holiday Resort. It had a game room, a vending machine that sold glass bottles of pop, and most important to us, a big outdoor swimming pool. We rent a cabin with a kitchen it and passed our days jumping in and out of the water. My parents barbecued, smoked cigarettes, and played cards with my aunt, by, by, by my dad also took long breaks to join us kids in a pool. He was handsome, my dad with a mustache that tapped down the sides of his lips. His chest, chest and arms were thick and roped his muscle. It showed that he had once been an athlete. During those long afternoons in the pool, he paddled and laughed and tossed our small bodies into the air. His weakened legs suddenly less of a problem. Decline can be a hard thing to measure, especially when it's happening all around you. Every September when Craig and I showed a bag at Brian. Mar Elementary, we'd find fewer, fewer white, white kids on a, on a playground. Some had transferred to a nearby, nearby Catholic school, but many had left the neighborhood altogether. At first, it felt as if just the white families were leaving, but then that changed too. It soon seemed that anyone who had the means to go was now going. Much much of the time, the departures when announced and unexplained. We'd see a for sale sign in front of the uh, Yacker families house or a moving van in front of Teddy's and know what was coming. Mm. Perhaps the hardest time for my mom came when her fat friend Velma Stewart announced that she and her husband had put a down payment payment on a, on a house in a suburb called Park Forest. The these stewards had two kids and lived down the block on Euclid. Like us, they were apartment dwellers. Mrs. Stewart had a terrific sense of humor and a big laugh, which drew my mom to her. My mom to her. The two of them swept recipes and kept up with each other but never fell into the neighborhood's go gossip the way other moms did. Mrs. St Stewart's son, Donnie, and was Donnie was Craig's age and just as athletic, giving the two giving the two of them an instant bond. Her daughter Pamela, Pamela was a teenager already and not so interested in me, though I found all teenagers interesting. I don't remember much about Mr. Stewart, except that he drove a delivery truck for one of the big bakery companies in the city and that he would he and his wife and their kids were the lightest skinned black people I never ever met.